Well, of course, also with areas of sectors, they can make these questions as interesting as they want. Yeah. And now this is a really nice question where they only actually give you a part of a circle and they tell you, well, the area of this sector yeah, is 80 centimeters squared. So the area of this part is or equals to 80 square centimeters. Yeah. And that angle is 60 degrees. And given already the area of a sector, now you've got to find, well, what is the radius for this circle? Yeah, what is the radius for the circle which has a sector area of 80 centimeters squared when it's an angle of 60 degrees, yeah? close by the two radii? Okay, well, don't get overwhelmed yeah, with these types of questions. Yeah, they're just having a look if you are confident in your own abilities, and you should be, yeah? I know you can, because not try to um, have the final answer in your head already because I don't at the moment I have no idea what the answer is trust me yeah but uh, we are also not expected to know the final answer straight away we are expected to write the things down we know about this topic now what do we know well we know to find the sector area we do the total area of a circle pi r squared and then we times that always by that fraction of the circle we are interested in, which is always a particular angle out of 360, yeah, because that is the total amount of degrees in a full turn, and that always equals then to the sector area. So let me say, yeah, just, I'll just write it down, the sector area, okay? Oh, hang on a minute, now let's have a look, because in this particular case, what is the sector area? That is 80, so let's just put that there. And pi, yeah, it's a number. Eh? We don't know exactly what it is, but we're pretty close to it. Anyway, it's in your calculator, 3.1415, and a lot uh, more decimals. But that, anyway, is not a variable. We know what it is. Pi, okay, r squared, r is the question, and what is the radius times, and which angle do I have? Yeah, 60 out of 360. Okay, so I have this one equation, and how many unknowns do I have? Yeah, how many variables? Well, it's only r. Yeah, so I can solve it. One equation, one unknown, that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, now um, there are many ways that you can do this. Um, let me just do the method that I think most of you prefer. Let's work this out. 60 out of 360, that is 1 over 6. Yeah. But your calculator can even give that to you, yeah? That's a sixth, okay. So let's just do this multiplication. So 60 out of 360, or one over six, times pi. Let's just write that down, all right? Let's just write down all those decimals. Um, I know some of you will tell me now, yeah, but that's not necessary. I know it's not, but let's just do that. 0 0.5235987. Yeah, but if you do it like this, you have to write down all the decimals, and we still have an r squared there as well, and that should equal 80. Yeah. Now perhaps you could also have said, and that is a little bit easier. Well, a sixth of pi r squared equals 80, yeah, and then you don't have to write down all those decimals. But okay, I leave that up to you. How do we usually now rearrange the formula? If this would be 5r squared equals 80, if that would be 5r squared equals 80, let me write it down, 5r squared equals 80. How would you get rid of that 5 now? What would you do? Yeah. You would divide it by 5 in the end, 5 times r squared, so the inverse operation, divide by 5. Okay. Now I don't have 5, I have 0.5235987755 r squared. But I do the exact same operation, yeah? So the square of r, that is 80, divided by 0.5235987775, yeah? Or perhaps you have written down 80 divided by a sixth of pi, yeah, a sixth of pi. And which is a little bit shorter, but it doesn't matter. Okay, now, um, let's work it out. 80 divided by a sixth of pi, and divided by those decimals, it's gonna give me 100 
and fifty two point seven eight eight seven four five four. Eh? All the decimals do not round in the middle of your calculations because you can only round in your final answer. Eh? Because if I round now, that will affect my final answer. R squared equals that answer. Yeah. So what is the inverse operation of squaring? That indeed is the square root of 152.7887454. Okay, so that I press on my calculator. All right, let's write it down. And I, I always have too little space yeah, because I write down too much. Yeah? But no, you can't write down too much. It's never enough. So I'll just squeeze over here. 12.3 six zero and it continues but now I'm done yeah I'm not going to use this information because they're asking for the radius so three significant figures now one two three so the three stays a three or it goes up to a four and that depends on the next one and it's higher than a five then. so twelve point four centimeters squared so centimeters that's it that's my radius now, if, you, if they really want to make it interesting, they could ask you, so what is the diameter? And what is the diameter of this circle? Then you would have to multiply that number by two eh? and then round it, eh? because diameter is two times the radius. Okay, so they give me the area of a sector now, they give me an angle, I, I write down what I know, eh? I know the formula because I understand it, eh? it's pi r squared, the area of the whole circle times the fraction of my sector, basically the part I'm interested in. I put in everything I know and I rearrange the formula. And then it rolls out that R is 12.4 centimeters, which is corrected to three significant figures. Okay, leave me a comment if you still have a question about this. And otherwise, I'll see you at the next video.